This is Coogan Cassis Rifle Team in association with Matlinson in Marbella, uh, headquarters of Frank Warren here. How are you, Frank? I'm good, yourself? All good. Excellent. All good? Yeah. You look stressed, what's wrong? Oh, it takes around to get here on time to do your interview. <laughs> caught in a traffic jam. Um, obviously, it's, it has been uh, a little while since we've uh, properly caught up, Frank. Just wanted to talk to you first about uh, Billy Joe Saunders, obviously defended his uh, title for the first time uh, since beating Andy Lee against Akavov in Scotland a couple of weeks ago. Um, I mean, what's there to be said? Obviously, he defended the title, but of his own admission, was very disappointed with the performance in general. Yeah, I think there's a lot of circumstances. The training obviously didn't go well. Uh, there's issues there which uh, have got to be resolved. The fact the fight got put back a week. Um, it's supposed to, as you, we all know, it's supposed to be on a, a big show in Cardiff. Um, but he, he did what he had to do at the end of the day, and gritted his teeth and you know, ground out the uh, decision. Um, certainly not a vintage Billy Joe performance. We all know he's a much, much better fighter than that. He's, he's been out of the ring for a long while. It's a fight he had to have and get out of the way. He's done that and now he sets himself up for 2017 to move forward in more meaningful fights and I'm quite sure more meaningful performances once um, he gets his uh, training sorted out. From his own words, he said, based on that, he can forget about people like Golovkin. Well, of course he can. I yeah. mean, you know, he's not stupid. Bill, he's an intelligent guy, and he's, he knows better than anybody. I mean, the one thing about Bill is he's honest from that point of view. You know, he doesn't. He always says how it is. So you know, you got to respect him for that, and it's quite right. But people do have bad performances every now and then. In his case, though, I don't know if it's a self-inflicted bad performance or what. You know, the fact of the matter is, he's been inactive. Some of that is being because of weight issues. And, uh, you know, that's all has to be addressed. And hopefully that, you know, this, that his last fight against Agavov is now a, uh, hopefully a, a significant moment in his career where he knows that you've got to be at your best and you can't mess around in this game. You know, it's very relevant that you've got um, Bernard Hopkins, 51, 52 years of age fight, it was his last fight. And you look at the condition and the way he lives and his lifestyle. And I'm sure no one wants to be boxing when they're 52, but you look at him and, and think if you do live the right life, or even like Mayweather, if you live that life, how, how much better it is for you and how much, um, how much more you can get out of yourself. And uh, Bill needs to think about that. Is it safe to say that he'd look at, obviously, another fight before he can look at Golovkin or Canelo? Well, he might want to do that, but we're in the hands of the WBO at the moment. And uh, I'm sure he'd like to do all those things, but the fact of the matter is, you know, he was quite close to being stripped through inactivity. So we've got that fight out of the way, but he has a mandatory due, and uh, he might have two mandatories due, all of them. So we've got to look at them uh, and look where we go. But, he, you know, he needs to be in a meaningful fight, he needs to get some something that grabs his attention and knows uh, to, to, so that he can focus on getting the best out of himself. And he's got, this Christmas, he's got to have a frugal Christmas. He's got to have a Christmas where he's not going to be eating too many mince pies because, uh, you know, he can't afford to pile on the pounds. He's going to have to really think about that. It's, it's been around three three to four weeks since, obviously, you announced this uh, groundbreaking deal with, uh, with BT Sport and Box Nation. Um, I'm assuming you've been very busy to try and get together the schedule uh, as we're approaching the end of the year. You've already got Tyrone Nurse, the British champion, on board. Um, I mean, there's rumours from every fighter, whether they're coming over here, whether they're not. Well, you know, you can have a little exclusive. Josh Warrington signed with us, and we're going to have a press conference uh, up in Leeds um, after Christmas, get Christmas out of the way, and we're going to announce what we're doing with, with, with working with him in the future. I'm absolutely delighted he's on board. Um, he's like... For me, he's a Yorkshire um, Ricky Hatton. He's got a great following, and we're going to turn uh, Leeds into, a, into hopefully, a, as we did over the years, when we built Manchester into being a boxing top boxing city. And I think we can do the same thing with Leeds because Leeds has the facilities there. It's got a great stadium, or arena, I should say, and it's got a great football stadium. So there are there are a lot of things to be done there, and we're going to be working very closely with uh, with with him, with Josh, and. Uh, Steve Wood in building him into becoming a world champion. Obviously, since Josh and Matchroom parted ways, there was that was the big speculation that he would come over to you. So over the last two years, we've seen sort of the rise of Josh Warrington. Well, we've been talking to him for a long time. Mm. You know, I mean, he was in contract. Um, 
and he wasn't going to renew the contracts and our talks have been you know, ongoing. Um, unfortunately, with all what's been going on in the last few weeks with fights and various other announcements, it's been a bit difficult to find a good clear day to do a press conference on. But as I say, we'll, we, will, we will get into more detail in the next few weeks and, and move forward. Right? But I'm absolutely over the moon to be working with him. Do you anticipate that he will fight for the world title next year in 2017? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, um, he's had a had an operation, and we're going to get that sorted out. And once we get that sorted out, we'll, um, you know, we'll we'll um, know what the what the time frame is going to be for that. So, Josh Warrington, Tyron Nurse already on board. Uh, I'm assuming. Are we to expect more over the coming weeks? Yeah, absolutely. We've been talking to a lot of guys, a lot of amateurs, a lot of guys. You know, what I'm pleased with what we've done. And, you know, of course we want all the big fights. I mean, that's that's the sort of, you know, it's the instant gratification that a TV channel and I suppose me as a promoter want. But our job is building the stars of tomorrow. And we've got a fantastic group of young boxers coming through. And I think within the next year, especially the amount of dates that we've got now and the amount of um, exposure they're going to get. I think we're going to have to see some seriously, some seriously um, great opportunities for our youngsters and I think we're going to get some great world champions out of them. There's a couple of guys there I think are, are going to be phenomenal world champions. There was also a rumour a couple of weeks ago uh, which Eddie Hearn denied that there was a link with Kel Brook. Do you know... We made Kel Brook an offer. Made him an offer to fight Liam Smith. Um, but for, as in regards to him coming over here? So yeah, him fighting on, fighting on, uh, on BT, yeah. Yeah, we've made that offer too. And Box Nation on BT, I should say. Yeah, we made him an offer. Any um, response from that? We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, you know, he's obviously, uh, he's, he's not, again, he's out for a while. He's got, he's, he's, I think he's been injured, he had a, something wrong with him. So who knows, if it, if it does, it'd be... Great. I mean, he started his career with me. He had I got him to n rank number one in the world to mandatory to Pacquiao was it five six years ago? So you know he's done well and he's a, he's a t very talented fighter and that'd be a great fight. That'd be a great fight him and Liam Smith. Also, we know that you put in an offer for um, Terry Flanagan to fight Luke Campbell, I yeah. believe. Yeah. Uh, again, an update on that? Um, we had a, a response saying that uh, they would be very interested in that fight, not now, but in the summer. So, great, let's get it on. That's a great fight for Terry and for Luke. Hmm. But it's good the possibility these fights are sort of are looking more positive well, now than maybe about. a couple yeah, of years that's ago. What we, that's what it's always been about, isn't it? I mean, all the things that, all the thi everything that was being said for years about. Uh, Sky's the only place to be, you only can be on pay-per-view if you're on Sky. All that's all, we knew it's a matter of time before all that got swept away. And it's a matter of us being the flag bearers in doing that. And we've done it and we've, you know, the pay-per-view scene, this structure has totally changed. Um, the TV market's changed, boxing's very fashionable. And that's great. And that's good for everybody involved. And it's, and, and what I like to see is I love a bit of competition. You remember I, when I came in, I mean, we didn't have any of these. There were just two TV channels. It was BBC, ITV, and ITV didn't want to know about boxing. You couldn't get on BBC in those days. It was wrapped, wrapped up with Mickey Duff and co. So, you know, it's good. That's what competition's all about. And, you know, and, and one thing about me, I'm competitive. And, uh, and we, we, as I say, we work very hard. And we work working, with, you know, we're working with people, other, other people in the business to, you know, to, to make these things happen. Frank, obviously yesterday we see uh, the news that Chris Eubank Jr. Uh, will fight for the IBO title against Quinlan um, next year. I think I believe it's February the 4th on ITV box office. Uh, first of all, your, your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts on ITV back in boxing is fabulous. I mean, that's great for boxing. My thoughts on Eubanks... Um, Didn't want to fight Billy Joe. Didn't fight Golovkin. Didn't fight Tommy Langford because he felt he was too dangerous and he may do him seriously harm all boxers at that level. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure he made a written statement saying he, you know, he's he such a devastating fighter that the fight guys of Tommy Langford, who's I think ranked about number three in the WBO at the moment, um, for the title would be a, would be terrible. And he's, you know, every fight's got to be a step forward. And he's now fighting this guy. Um, What's his name again? Quinlan. Quinlan, who's 11 and 1, I understand. And in fact, we offered him the opportunity to fight Virginda Singh.
for this Saturday, at least a couple of months ago, and he never came, never even responded, came back to us. But there he is, 11 and 1, from Australia, household name in Australia. I've done that for years anyway, but there he is. And now everyone's being conned, pay-per-view. I mean, please, it, they should pay you to watch that. How can you, Banks, be taken seriously? You know, it's it's ridiculous. How much are they? How much are they giving the fans to watch that? I wouldn't put that fight on on an undercard. Eleven and one. It's a disgrace. It's conning the public. And like I've said for ages, the old man we know is a con merchant. In you know, Harry cons the public of all these statements he makes about his son. The son must be on in on the act. Won't fight Tommy Langford. Because he was he was too lethal and he made do him serious damage. Well, what's this fella done to deserve being punished by him? This 11 and one fighter. And you look at the fella's record. I mean, please, who's kidding who here? Obviously, it's the IBO title um, yeah, right. which is on the line. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which Chris Eubank wrote a statement yesterday to say he's happy to be fighting for his first world title. We know that. A lot of champions in the past, i.e. Klitschko, etc., have held that along with other titles, but yeah, yeah, yeah. some people don't regard that as yeah. uh, a legitimate world title. Is that fair to say? Well, I think you're like an 11-1 guy fighting for the world title tells you all you need to know, doesn't it? I mean, forget about that. You know, Rick, you know Eubanks has, has got a good record as to fight for a world title, but how can this other guy have be a, a, be a legitimate challenger? Was it a vacant title? I don't know if he's the holder. I'm not well, too that sure. Tells on that. You he may be the holder. He's the holder in 11 and 1. And knocked out by a guy who had eight fights a few few fights ago. I mean, please, it's, it's, this is, you know, it's, it's just ridiculous. I, I hope, I just hope that IT, ITV, I don't know who's advising them on boxing, but whoever it is, this is a piss take of the fans. Pay per view. You pay a penny for this, you've got to be off your head. You pay a penny for it. I mean, it's a disgrace. There are great fights out there that could get, that could take the opportunity to do that. You know, fight, people who are not with Matrim or with us who could take advantage of that and they're putting that crap on. Do me a favour. What price? Is, what are the bookmakers making that fight? I haven't seen, to be honest. I should think he's two hundred to one on. I'll give anybody. They want to have a bet with me. I'll give them two hundred to one. They can have 200 to 1 that he'll, he'll win the fight. What's his name? Quillen. You know, there's good odds. Whatever the, I bet the bookmakers are making 20 to 1. He's got, they can have 200 to 1. He's got zero chance of winning the fight. It's a joke. Pay per view. Frank, with you being knowledgeable in the pay per view uh, business side of things, how many buyers would you anticipate that doing? Well, did, look, you've got, first of all, you've got to look at you know, ITV or a terrestrial channel. This is a, a, another channel they've set up for pay per view. So they're going to have, they're going to market this fight, obviously, on. ITV one, so they've got a big audience to, to, to sell and you know to make aware that it's on. And you know, some of these people might be gullible and may buy this garbage. But the and they'll obviously do the undercard old thing on ITV four. I don't know how it works out, but it's a garbage fight. It's a garbage fight. Don't charge fans for this fight. It's wrong. You know, it's wrong. This is not a good advert for for for, for, for what the state of British boxing. British boxing is in a healthy state. This is not a good advert for our sport, not at all. You know, this is this is a joke, and it's a joke that a man, anyone would part with one penny, even buying a ticket. So a man who, and I'm repeat again, would not fight Billy Joe Saunders, would cause them all out, would not fight Golovkin, both two contracts there, and Tommy Langford won't fight him because he give him he, he cause him serious problems to his health and. He's very wary about the damage that will happen with fights. But you fight this fella, go on pay per view. It's a con man. Well, um, like I said, it's great that ITV are back in it's the fabulous. sport. Yeah. But the, the pay per view element starting off with this is, is yet to be seen how that will yeah, go. You know, listen, and I've got to tell you something, you know, pay per view, the thing is as well, you keep having all these pay per views, it kills the sport in some ways because it's, it's maintaining the standard. You know, I can remember the, going back to the Sky days where there was a lot of pay-per-view on and had a couple of dodgy fights on there. Um, that fight, you know, remember Audley Harrison fight wasn't a, a good fight, and, and they cut, they bowed out. And what their model is at the moment, seems to me, is, is Sky, is obviously they're, they're, they're having serious cutbacks, they're laying staff off all over the place. The Sky 
sports subscriptions have dropped. The actual sport in the last four years have dropped, I understand, by at least 25%, so I'm told. And if that is the case, um, they have to make as much money and get as much money as they can to buy it for the football, because it's football that drives it all. It's football that drives nearly all the sport in this country, and they need the money for that. So if you have a couple more, do you have a couple of dodgy pay-per-view shows, and let's get it right, the pay-per-view show that Sky did this week was a joke. The content of it, you look at it and think about it. I mean, how was Molina and Joshua a pay-per-view fight? Being really honest about that. No one could say, you, everyone knew what the result was gonna be about that. That was a foregone conclusion. And what saved them, that was a fantastic fight between, and a real good old domestic dust-up between White and Chisora, which I thought, by the way, Chisora may have won. But even then, that's not pay-per-view, is it? These guys are, you know, one got beat by Joshua, Dylan White, and Chisora got comprehens comprehensively beaten by um, Tyson Fury. And when you look at it then, now the next thing we're going on to, we're being sold, and I don't understand this in some ways, and it's not, <laughs> I hope people think it's sour grapes, because we were forced into a rematch with Klitschko and Tyson Fury before Tyson's problems. And we were forced into that because his management, in their wisdom, signed a rematch clause to fight uh, Klitschko, which I would never have done if I'd have been in that position. But Tyson comprehensively beat Klitschko. I mean, everybody knows that, don't they? Absolutely beat him. Didn't. So Klitschko suddenly is fighting for a title, having been comprehensively beaten. And by the time he goes into this fight, He's 18 months since he had a fight, and everyone's going crazy about it. I, I, I don't get that. I don't get that at all. I don't get that at all. Obviously, they, they, they announced after that Molina fight, that Joshua Wall fight, at Wembley against Klitschko uh, in April next year. So what do you make of that fight uh, between Anthony Joshua and, and Klitschko? Well, I think, it's a, I think it's a good fight, but please, not, it's not the two best heavyweights on the planet, is it? How can it be? You know, he got comprehensively beaten. Dylan White was giving Anthony Joshua all sorts of problems until, you know, Joshua pulled it, pulled it out of the bag and knocked him over. I mean, he wobbled him, didn't he? And he was giving him all sorts of problems. And Dylan White and Derek Chisora were having life and death. Derek Chisora gets comprehensively beaten by Tyson Fury. So the point I'm making about it is, let's, you know, everybody start putting their proper heads on and thinking about what they're watching and what they're being sold. You know, the winners out of this, again, will be StubHub. That's what happens every time, isn't it? You know, that's why they're asking questions. Select committee in Parliament are asking questions. Why are all these tickets going on StubHub? Why? I don't know. Well, we all know why, but what is it, what's going on? So there's so much crap going down when the sport is really is blossoming in a lot of ways. And so don't spoil it. Don't bloody spoil the sport. Don't overkill the pay-per-view. You know, we'll be doing pay-per-view. We'll be doing pay-per-view fights, but we're not going to you're not going to slaughter it. I mean, I like to think most of the pay-per-views there might be a couple of odd, odd exceptions, but over the years, most of the pay-per-views we've done were pretty competitive pay-per-views, or, or good value pay-per-views, you know, as, as such. But, um, you know, we got, as a sport, we've got to, you know, have a, have a real feeling for it and a feel for what's going on. And, you know, conning the public, certainly as far as that Eubank fight's concerned, being pay-per-view is a joke. And you look at situations like... Um, even what happened with Derek Chisora before the fight, you know, the border control, if he any more trouble and he's going to be out of it and they're going to take his license away, and which I thought was the most hilarious thing. At the time I did that fight was, uh, was uh, Daddy Hearn and Baby Hearn, both of them banging on about how disgusting it was that anyone's license in Chisora and these, shouldn't be, these fights shouldn't be allowed to happen. It brings a sport in disrepute. But there it is, their pavers. Oh, it's terrible, isn't it? You know, let's, let, let's get the fight on and get our few quid. You know, I was called a mercenary. Well, they're two mercenaries. But you enjoyed the boxing on Saturday night, Frank, you know? Yeah, I loved it. I, too, I did love it. I loved Terence Crawford. Yeah. I, I mean, I've been, you know, I think I've said to you a lot, I've been a fan of his for a long, long time, long before he won the world title. I remember Alec Morrison uh, with Ricky Burns back in the days when I was promoting him and uh, a fight pulled out and uh, Alex Morrison with about... I think it was about three weeks' notice. Well, fight, fight um, Crawford, he's number one. And I, I actually had to write a letter to him explaining why he shouldn't fight Terence Crawford. And Terence Crawford now, I think, is the best American fighter out there. You know, Lomachenko and him, I think, are the two best fighters. And, you know, Golovkin, obviously, there. But 
I mean, they're phenomenal fighters. And, and we've got a heavyweight division with a load of youngsters in suddenly from all these old geezers. They've now got quite a few youngsters with Parker there. Uh, Parker's got to fight Yuri Fury, so I'm really looking forward to that. Have they? Oh, yeah, it's been ordered. He's got to fight Yuri Fury for the title. There was talk of Huey Fury fighting Deontay Wilder as well. Well, that's, that's there, and there's been talks on that. So at the moment, he's got a choice, and we're going to make that choice. But he, was, he, he will fight for the world title in the first quarter of next year. That's great news. Yep. He will fight for the world title with Huey Fury. And right. Tyson, please God, he gets his license back. He Have you spoke to Tyson back. Frank about... Oh, it's funny, he was texting me a couple of weeks ago um, from Scotland, and uh, he, you know, he seemed quite. he wants to get back into it. You know, the most important for Tyson is get his his life in order. You know, get himself sorted out, and then hopefully, if he, he can get back to him boxing with us, get his all the issues out of the way, and get back into boxing with a clear mind, and and be able to just focus on what he's good at doing because he's the best heavyweight in the world, bar none. I'm looking what, I, what I'm looking at now. You know, they're all they're all imposters holding his belts, all of them, all imposters holding his belts. He's five, but by a by a mile the best heavyweight there. And I hope that he comes back. And I'm quite sure if he does, it won't take long for him to get his bells back. And the big fight would be him and David Hay in the summer. I'd love him to get his license back and I'd like to see that fight happen in the summer. That'd be a huge fight. Obviously, a month ago, we saw rumors of David Hay potentially coming uh, over to, to you at Box Nation, BT. Uh, we're seeing that he's fighting, obviously, Tony Bellew uh, in March next yeah. year on Sky. Uh, pay-per-view first of all was well, it was we were, we yeah. were quite close to doing a fight but unfortunately it fell apart because of what happened with Tyson he was going to fight for um, a version of the title and then suddenly you know what happened with Tyson it all, it all fell apart um, how could I you know I wouldn't stand in the way of him fighting Tony Bellew why would you do that he's going to make a lot of money out of it you know for me it's a foregone conclusion that fight unless Tony Bellew gets very very lucky um, but you know, I know David Hay very well. If he if he wants to fight, if the guy he wants to fight is the guy he'll beat. And uh, I went down. I watched him. I was watching him work doing a going into his detail. I was watching him in the. We went down for a chat about something. I was watching him in the gym, going through a routine he does. And he's you know he's quite impressive. He's quite impressive as a in in his preparation and how he goes about his his business from that point of view. And I think that um, I think he I think he beat Tony Bellew, and I think that's a qu not, oh, that's a question when he catches Tony Bellew. I don't know what Tony can do to 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 be quite honest. I don't know what Tony's got to beat him unless he can really catch him. Um, you know, when you think of Orville McKenzie having Bellew on the floor, and you think of the few fights where he's been on the floor, you know, David Hayes a phenomenal puncher. He's a big guy, and I just think that he'll walk through him. I think he'll walk through him. I think as soon as he catches him, I mean, what's Tony been going to do? Is he going to box him, or is he going to have a fight with him? He goes and have a fight with him. He's playing with his hands, and, and is he going? And is he going to be able to keep away from him? So it's going to be from that point of view. There's a bit of intrigue there, but it's a, I mean, it's a great payday for for both of them, but certainly a pay, great payday for for um, David Hay. And uh, I certainly would not have anyway, <coughs> even if I could have, I certainly wouldn't be saying to him, "Don't take that fight." Frank, just finally, when do you anticipate announcing your schedule for BT and Box Nation for Probably next year? We were trying to get something out um, within the next week before Christmas. But we'll have a press conference the first week of January and we'll be announcing quite a few things. Then. No oh. rush. Slowly, slowly. Slowly, slowly. All right, well, Frank, um, we'll catch up again next week at the, the Box Nation Christmas party. We will, mate. We'll be there. Yeah. We'll have a couple of mulled wines if you're up for it. Yep, there'll be plenty of mold wine. <laughs> <laughs> Old wine, yeah. Um, yeah, all right, well, listen, we'll catch up there. And, um, yeah, it's good to... Unless you've got anything else you want to add, no, Frank? No, I'm sure we can talk on Monday, can't we? Yeah. Anything comes up. But as I say, we're all delighted the way things have gone from our point of view, and we're delighted the way boxing's going. It's just a shame, as I say, that the old con artist is uh, at it again. Don't buy it. Do not buy it. Do not buy it. You're being conned. Frank Warren, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV and we'll catch up with you next week. Cheers, mate. Cheers.